Hey, what's up guys? Shuckle King here, bringing you my quarterfinals game for NTP. This week we are facing off against Matt O'Shea, the number one seed. I'm currently in here as the number eight seed. Uh, definitely not the season I was kind of expecting. It's, it's tough to say because I just drafted a lot of different mods than what I would normally draft. Um, but it was a cool experience and cool that I'm able to make playoffs. So I'm definitely okay with the end result, as long as I make it a playoffs, I feel like I have a decent chance to still win this championship, especially with the changes I made to this team. Um, before we go further with the bill, consider giving a uh, subscription. Definitely appreciate everyone's support they've been giving me throughout this season, and hopefully we can uh, provide a couple more videos for this NTP season. Um, so going into this game, Matt, again, number one seed, he's had a great season, eight and two, and really high differential. So he's been doing pretty well with this team. Um, and me, again, not the greatest, but definitely doable. Uh, and I think this matchup definitely favors Matt. The Sand plus Urshifu and Zapdos is really a pain for me to take on. Um, it's not like, even though Urshu Rapid, I have like Finny, which is basically the best answer to it. Uh, he has a decent amount of things to take advantage of Finny. So definitely unfortunate. There are like one or two Mons that I think have a great matchup in this game, and I will definitely go over them. But... The biggest annoyance to this team is definitely the um, the Zap the Excadrill. Zapdos is good too, but Excadrill and Sand just like completely nukes me. And with like Swords Dance, Earthquake, Iron Head, and Poison Jab, like those moves just absolutely nuke. Now we, uh, I've had a decent amount of mocks and shoutouts to uh, Leo, Vapsis, Slick, Milan uh, for some mocks this game. I usually like never mock uh, but i didn't like this matchup at all so and it's a different definitely a weird team i'm bringing this game so definitely wanted to test it out for the most part it worked out but Matt's could be a lot more prepared than all these other mockers so we'll definitely see about that um and shout outs to jacko and uh, maddie brolic for uh looking at this build as well so yeah that's good drill and sand completely nukes me um like what is my earthquake switch in it's bulu which gets nuked by an iron head or a poison jab aerodactyl which gets nuked by an iron head Charizard, which is honestly an okay answer because I don't think he's going to run Rock Slide in this game. Um, and Iron Head's not going to be doing a lot. Um, so that is an option, but he has Urshifu, he has Zapdos, Tyranitar, uh, Dragalge even. It, it's not a great Charizard game. I'm not going to be bringing it. Uh, too unreliable. And then any like Air Balloon months, I suppose, could take it on. Latios could take an Earthquake, but it could also be Shadow Claw. Um, Escadrill to uh, kill Latios. So that was something that he was really focusing on. Um, so I would definitely have to consider a Cassie Berry, maybe Latios for this game. Um, Urshu Rapid, very annoying. Um, Finny takes it on fine. Um, to an extent, Latios can too. The, like, Scarf U-turns are good at 2-8 KO Latios. And I'm going to need Latios to take on other things outside of the Urshifu. So basically, I have to rely on Finny to beat it 1v1. He's run Protective Pads Urshifu a lot this season. So I could see him running it this game. Though I kind of doubt it. And I'll actually show what I predict what his team is going to be in a bit. But... Um, yeah, Finny's gonna definitely be clutch to take on an Urshu, and I'm 100% bringing Finny. That should be pretty obvious with this build. Um, Zapdos, it's just bulky and annoying. And could it even be fast enough to kill my, uh, Darmanitan if it's, like, if I'm not scarfed? Or even if he, like, I don't think he's gonna be scarfed to Zapdos, let's be real. But Heat Wave's gonna do a lot. Heat Wave plus Electric Coverage hits my team pretty well. And he's run U-Turn, like, every week on Zapdos, so U-Turn's gonna be doing a little bit of chip to the, uh, Latios. That's definitely something, and then just gets momentum going into Tyranitar, or... Maybe like a Scarf Urshifu as well. So Zapdos is going to be annoying this game. Tyranitar, the Mon itself is not as great as the other three, but the fact that it gives automatic sand for Escadrill, I think it's coming in Smooth Rock or Choppleberry. I think are 100% one of those two are going to be the brings. Um, really depends on how much he values the uh, Excadrill just long-term sweeping versus having a little bit more utility with the Tyranitar this game. Um, I can expect that to be pretty physical defensive to take on Darmanitan plus Aegislash, because it doesn't really need special defense bulk to take on um, Latios Aura Spheres. Um, so those four 100% are coming. Um, there's probably three slots that I'm debating, two of the three. Dragalge, just to get up Toxic Spikes. Toxic Spikes are definitely nice against this team, and Dragalge can get them up pretty reliably. Uh, I suppose like Aegislash is a pretty decent answer to... Um, Dragalge, outside of that, don't really have a safe switch into the uh, dual stabs. Um, Alakazam could come this game. It's pretty fast. Outspeeds my Latios. I only have Aerodactyl plus um, Jolteon outspeed. I haven't brought Jolteon this season. And Aerodactyl is not great against Zapdos. Like, I don't kill, and it would kill me in return. Um, 
It can kind of take on Excadrill if it, uh, actually, no, Aerodactyl doesn't. It has uh, Iron Head and that would kill me. Urshifu could have Aqua Jetty even if it's like Banded and that would kill. So Aerodactyl's kind of tough to the, bring this game. So Alakazam seems pretty nice just to add speed everything on my team. Uh, Focus Sash to live any one hit guaranteed. Um, I've also seen a Cassie Berry to take on like an Aegis Slash Shadow Sneak or like a Latio Shadow Bulb. Um, it could be Life Orb, just offensive. Hits my team pretty hard. Um, like Psychic does decent damage to Finny because I'd have to be physically defensive to take on Urshifu. Um, so yeah, Alakazam's decent. Even Encore, I've seen to a take on like Hallmine Latios, which could be an okay answer um, to his team. So yeah, Alakazam's decent. And Sylveon. Sylveon, I've seen either physically defensive to take a Darmanitan hit, because spoilers, Darmanitan nukes the scheme. Or even like a really fast... Um, Sylveon set, I don't think Scarf. Scarf could come to an ounce speed Latios, I suppose, but um, like a fast Sylveon set to like set off a wish and go for Mystical Fire against the Aegis Slash, because Aegis Slash is also pretty decent against this team. Um, so yeah, I fully expect six of those seven mod. Kafagor guess, is very unlikely, not impossible to come just to set up T spikes, and even could be like Trick Room, because Trick Room plus Dragology like kind of wrecks my team. Um, Lapras, he's brought a lot this season, but it's really not a darn switch, and I don't really see that coming. Um, would be more likely than most other people to have Lapras on their team, because he's used it pretty well this season. Tangela, Subat, really no considerations on this build, because Darmanitan just nukes those anyway. So, yeah, so I guess we could go over slightly what I think he's going to bring, and this is also based on builds that he's had in general this season. He's been pretty consistent. I imagine an Excadrill that's not Life Orb is coming this game. If it's Life Orb, that's going to, like, do so much damage to my team. Um, in sand, but I don't think he's gonna bring it, which is definitely a plus. I could see some berry. It could be Chopple Berry to take like a, a Darm Superpower or a um, Pasho Berry to take a Finny Surf. Um, definitely options there. Um, and yeah, probably those only two berries would be realistic. I, again, don't think it's Life Orb. Sword Sands, Iron Head, Earthquake. Those three moves 100% come. Could be Poison Jab in this last la Sandstorm. If, like, Tyranitar's dead and you really want another way to set up sand, um, an Excadrill should be an option. Um, Magnet Rise seems like a little bit of a lesser option, but could come. Rock Slide could come. Rapid Spin could come. Definitely has options in this slot, but I fully expect those three moves. This speed is actually pretty annoying, this 236 Jolly Bring. I think this is a set he's going to bring. That's a 20 Spit Def. Um, and that's annoying because Aerodactyl Scarf wouldn't be at that speed, or if it's like a Dragon Dance. Um, because Excadrill add speed would need 150 speed add speed those two. So I don't know if he even necessarily preps for like a Scarf Aerodactyl or plus one speed Aerodactyl or a quick feed Jolteon. Um, but definitely something that you can consider. This is also nice to add speed uh, max speed top of Finny. So it kind of like almost coincides that like this both adds speed plus one speed Aerodactyl Jolteon and also add speeds um, max speed top of Finny outside of sand. Um, so that's the ring for Excadrill Zapdos. Probably something on this spread of bulk. Um, should be able to take one Scarf Dorm Icicle Crash, I believe. Um, honestly, I don't remember. Um, Darmanitan. Um, Galar. Maybe not. I don't think Zapdos is that bulky. Um, but it takes on like uh, Aegis Slash pretty reliably. Um, level 50 and level 50. Oh, no, it doesn't take it. Okay, yeah. So, uh, Darm always kills with Icicle Crash, unless he's, like, Yachi Berry or something. I would kind of doubt it. I think Boots... Actually, he could bring Yachi Berry. Boots is probably more likely. I don't run rocks a whole lot, so I could see him being Yachi, predicting me to not have rocks in this team. Um, so, yeah, this set is just decent. Heat Wave hits the Aegis Slash, plus the uh, Bulu Thunderbolt hits the... Uh, the Finny, um, Roost for Longevity and U-Turn, so that way, like, Stunfisk doesn't hard wall like a Volt Switch set and loses momentum. Um, Urshifu, it could be Scarfed for sure, but I would more expect, like, a bulky Rocket Helmet set. He needs an answer to a Dormant Attack, because that just absolutely nukes his team. Um, and, like, a physically defensive-ish Urshifu does pretty well. The speed allows me to add speed, um, or adds him to add speed, uh, Tapu Finny, add speeds, Bulu, unless I'm Scarfed, and I don't think I'd bring Scarf Bulu in this game. That kind of seems like a weird bring. Um, so something like this could be solid. Also, even something like a lot of speed to add speed uh, if I'm like not Scarfed or Manitan or something. That could be an option and have Rocky Helmet. Could even, even be like a lot of physical defense. Um, or it could just be like Max Max Scarfed to add speed uh, 
uh, Darmanitan anyway and kill it through close combat. That's definitely an option, but that doesn't really help against the Finny anyway. So I think like a Rocky Helmet set makes sense. Tyranitar, Choppleberry, or um, uh, Smooth Rock. Both of those are definitely legitimate. Stealth Rocks protect to rack up Sand Chip on Mons and also to rack up uh, T-Spikes if he decides to bring it. Body Press just does decent damage against like the uh, Darmanitan and Crunch to hit the Latios plus the Aegis Slash. Um, and, I mean, it doesn't hit the Bulu that hard, but it doesn't really matter. Um, I guess it hits the uh, Pangoro. Um, not that this mod's gonna stand on a Pangoro anyway. Body Press plus Crunch seems like pretty decent combination there. Dragalge, this would be able to live a Scarf, um, Darmanitan Yacht, uh, Icicle Crash after Rocks and Sand Chip, and I probably kill in return with Sludge Wave. Flip turn for momentum, Toxic Spikes are pretty nice this game. I could also see this being Protect the Rack up. Uh, sand Chip could be Draco, but I don't think Draco is that great this game. Um, Alakazam, again, this Dragalge, Alakazam, Sylveon, could be any two or three mons. I could see d Leam, Shadow Ball, Psychic Recover, could be Focus Sash, could be Kasib Berry, Life Orb, um, I've also seen Encore over Recover just to uh, make sure that uh, Latios doesn't win. So I think that's pretty valid. This would add speed um, Latios, I believe. And Sylveon, I could either see being very physically defensive to take a Darm, Scarf Darm hit, or um, this could be speedy to outspeed Aegis Slash and go for Mystical Fire and kill it. So definitely a lot of options there. Um, the approach that I had this game, definitely weird. So first Pokemon is a Darmanitan, and this is Banded. Scarf is nice against um, outspeeding like Zapdos if it's not a Choice Scarf itself. Um, Alakazam, it also had speeds, so that's great. Otherwise, I felt like Banded just hits harder. It's not like I'm outspeeding um, Escadrill out, or in sand anyway. And Bandit will add speed Escadrill um, if Sand isn't up, unless he's like Scarfed or has a Rapid Spin boost or something, which would kind of seem crazy. Definitely possible. Ice Go Crash U-Turn just hits the team super hard. Superpower hits the Lapras if it's like physical defensive, and he does decide to bring that set. Doesn't seem great. Um, and an Earthquake I had on this set, I think to kill like a bulky Escadrill. Um, but I went with Ice Punch just to make sure I don't miss. I, there was a game where I missed three Ice Go Crashes in a mock in a row. So... Yeah, let's uh, go for Ice Punch if, like, if I really don't need that damage output from Ice Go Crash. I'm always kicking Ice Go Crash. Otherwise, unless I 100% know that Ice Punch is going to kill something, I'm going to go for Ice Go Crash. Because that extra 10 base power will definitely make a lot of difference with Bandit and Gorilla Tactics. Definitely adds up. Um, speed allows me to add speed. Um, actually allows me to add speed Max Speed Scarf Dragalge. If that was like something that was a kind of consideration to bring. Um, definitely seems pretty unlikely, but there was no reason not to try to uh, outspeed that. And this will also outspeed the Excadrill. Um, this next Pokemon is Aegis Slash. So this is a really cool bring. Um, so this is going to be my lead turn one. And unless if it's an Urshifu lead, I'm going for Head Smash turn one. If it's an Urshifu lead, then I'm going to go into my Top of Finny and deal with the uh, and deal with it that way. But Head Smash, hopefully he brings in Zapdos as the answer to Aegis Slash. And Head Smash... Plus Shadow Sneak should kill, unless if he's max max bulk Zapdos and it's a roll to kill, I don't think he's gonna bring that. I think he's gonna want some speed like that, uh, um, this set that I have up here. Something like this would definitely kill. And also what's nice about this set is the combination of Head Smash recoil damage, um, plus, um, rocks in the future will allow me to live a Jolly Excadrill Shadow Claw, if that's the brink, um, because I do have Air Balloon, so I wouldn't be affected by Earthquake, so I could live a uh, Excadrill hit in the future, unless he gets a crit, or unless if he's a, a boosting on him, both which I <laughs> I doubt, but he could get a crit with Shadow's uh, Claw for sure, and then I would kill a close combat, unless if he's a Choppleberry. So, definitely a niche there, but I like that combination. Um, the speed allows me to add speed Tyranitar. I could see him being a little bit of speed and maybe speed creep, but this should be plenty of speed. I think he's gonna want his T-Tar to be pretty bulky. Um, could also add speed like a slow Sylveon, I suppose. Um, Iron Head doing a lot of damage to Sylveon, and then Shadow Sneak to pick off like a uh, Alakazam that has his sash broken. Um, next we got a uh, Custap Berry Baton Pass Tailwind Latios. This is definitely a interesting bring. Allows me to live two Scar Surging Strikes from um, Urshifu, even if it's Max Attack. So that's definitely nice, and I would kill it second in return. Probably die to Sand um, afterwards, but I will be able to kill that. Arsir hits the. Uh, Tyranitar a little bit, 
But really in general, this Latios is going to be a bait to bring in either to Sylveon or to bring in to Titar, because both of those are pretty decent answers to Latios. So I just put Tom Pass and then bring in this Darmanitan and I just claim another kill. Like a switch in the Darm is Lapras um, if I don't first go for Superpower or like a bulky Urshifu. And that even gets like borderline 3 4 KO'd by Icicle Crash. And Superpower is going to do like 60 ish, 70% to it anyway. Um, so I like that. Tailwind as a last ditch effort. Um, the speed allowed me to outspeed the um, Yeska Drill outside of Sand. Um, it doesn't add speed, like a max speed, uh, I think it does add speed, max speed Zapdos, actually. Um, so that's definitely nice. Um, Tailwind is like a last ditch effort, I can bring in, uh, Darmanitan, um, as like I died of whatever hit, like a T-Tar Crunch or something. Uh, but I would go for a Tailwind before, and then Darmanitan for three turns just kills stuff with Icicle Crashes. Again, limited switch-ins, and that would be more of a late game type of deal. This is also an okay switch-in to like U-Turn Zapdos. Um, so that's definitely nice. Um, next Pokemon I have is my answer to Urshifu, and that is Tap It Finny. Uh, kind of a boring set, but definitely needed. Defog to get rid of Toxic Spice, because they're definitely annoying in this game, and also Rocks, that way Darm can come in as much as possible. Um, Dual Stab, Moonblast, um, hits the Dragalge and Surf, hits a lot of the mods otherwise. I didn't really need Scald to hit the uh, Zapdos, I didn't care that much about getting a burn on it. Ideally, I kill it in turn two with the Aegis slash Edge Slash, and I don't miss, plus Shadow Sneak. Um, and then Taunt, so like, T-Tar doesn't set up rocks on me, knowing that it can live a hit, or like, uh, uh, Dragalge setting up T-Spikes on me, predicting me to switch out or something. Um, next Pokemon is the Bulu, a Beery Berry. So I should always live a hit from the Excadrill, if I'm like, fairly, if I'm pretty low, I won't live a hit, but if I'm fairly healthy, I'll live a hit. Um, unless it's Poison Jab. I don't really see it coming. I definitely see Poison Jab on the Urshfu coming, but I think it's going to be Iron Head Earthquake and not Poison Jab on the uh, Excadrill. I should kill it in return. Stone Edge would do a lot of damage to the Zapdos. I would also add speed if he's like really bulky, but I would kind of doubt that. But mainly the speed is to add speed, um, max speed Jolly or Timid uh, Sylveon. And I guess a max speed Tyranitar, not that I'm too worried about that. Um, but mainly to outspeed the uh, Sylveon, um, so it doesn't give a big hit off on me. Um, because that happened a couple times in Mox, like a really fast Hyper Voice or even Specs, what doesn't kill max HP Blue, but it does a lot of damage to where it's basically a useless mon at this point. Um, Grassy Surge, also nice to uh, maybe let uh, Aegislash live in Earthquake if it takes a chip. Um, real on the game, or maybe lets uh, Darmanitan take an Earthquake from... That's a good drill, not that it would not go for an Iron Hand and kill him anyway, but maybe they'll as a uh, Aegis Slash to live in Earthquake if the uh, balloon gets broken by a weak move or something. Um, Wood Hammer just for general damage, high horsepower to hit the into a KO to Dragalge, and Horn Leech for general HP recovery. And the last mount I'm bringing is a Jolteon. So Kalua, I don't I don't know what the, what that name is. That's a Matty Brolic said to name it that. But here we go, Jolteon. Uh, first time coming this season to playoffs. Thunderbolt um, will kill the uh urshifu if it's like a just a normal max speed like a basically max hp max speed set with a little bit of bulk for the uh dormanitan if it wants to be something like that um i would kill with 52 special attack investment um this bulk also allows me to live a surging strikes from scarf urshifu believe it or not and so i would kill that in return so that's also kind of cool uh but this is also another bait mod so jolteon definitely baits in the uh, etka drill so I could baton pass on that and then either bring in my uh, Bulu, bring in my Finny. I could really bring in any of these five mons, honestly. Um, but obviously I don't touch the uh, Excadrill that reliably. I also don't touch the Tyranitar. Um, so that's another reason. I considered like, um, actually I considered Sunny Day Weather Ball. I didn't want to run Rain Dance plus Weather Ball because Rain Dance boosted like Choice Bandit or Shifu Rapid hits. Definitely hurt, so I didn't want that, but Sunny Day would have been interesting, but T-Tar is just such a reliable switch in any way, um, and I was probably going to die that it felt like it wasn't really worth it. Again, I really wanted to run Quick Feet Jolteon, but I knew the uh, extra control was going to add speed, so I wouldn't be able to add speed, set up a Sunny Day or something and go for that, but again, this is a bait mon to get in the darn. Um, so, yeah, definitely a weird team, uh, but fingers crossed that everything goes well, and uh, we get this win. All right, here we are for the game. So, okay, so no Alakazam. 
or Kafag, I guess. Um, I expected six out of these eight, so that's fine. Tangle, I didn't think Swoo bet or Lapras was kind of iffy. Um, yeah, going with the game plan I said before. Gonna lead with Aegislash, hopefully kill the uh, Zapdos on turn one or two. If it's a uh, bulkier spread, I should kill in two. If it's uh, not bulkier, then um, I'll kill in one hit. And, and if I hit, that'd be really bad if I missed. Oh boy, this is gonna be fun. Definitely playoffs are always just a, another level and actually put a decent amount of effort into this game. Not that I haven't in the past, but I'm pretty excited about this. Okay, Urshifu's up. Makes sense. I've seen this lead a decent amount of times in Mox. Um, U-turn seems pretty free, especially if he wants to break my uh, balloon. So I'm gonna go into the Finny. Don't think about it. Um, and see what type of spread he is. See if he goes for a poison jab or something. U turn. Okay. 177, 11 damage. Okay. And he's not pads. Good. That has to be Scarf. Uh, level 50. 11 damage. Ooh, that's not even attack invested. Okay. Physically defensive. Okay. I think it has to be physically defensive. Um, yeah, so no attack. Toxic spikes are definitely free here. Draco is also kind of free. Um, it's a tough call, honestly. Um, I could go into the Aegis Slash, honestly. Um, flip turn would probably be the worst case scenario here, but it's definitely an option that he could go for. Um, let's see. Toxic spikes, all right. He just slash blade. Um, I go for head smash here. Um, I could have gone for iron head. Let's see. Um, he doesn't switch, which is unfortunate. Unless he's faster, he's not faster. Ooh, 60%. It's not bad, but like max HP, flip turn. Okay. Like 30 damage. I'm sure it's uh, not attack invested. So like max HP, drink algae. Um, so definitely want to remove those toxic spikes. But I'm kind of okay getting that chip damage on Dragalge. Um, makes my Bulu a little bit better. Um, just Jolteon. Jolteon probably doesn't kill with two Shadow Balls because it's a little bit more uh, of a bulkier spread. Let's see what comes out. This Kadrill seems really safe. And I guess I could bring in the... Uh, Okay, yep, here comes out the Zapdos. I will go into my Jolteon. I should uh, keep track of the uh, terrain. Let's see, Jolteon, Zapdos, level 50, Heat Wave, gauge the damage, 171. So 47 damage. So no special attack. I could go for a Thunderbolt here and I would do pretty decent damage. Um, but I think I want a Baton Pass and keep the momentum. Um, one more turn of Misty Train Lift. Um, yeah, let's Baton Pass. U-turn could definitely come out here. I mean, it is going to come out here. 
but what do I want to go into? Um, I think my Urshifu is kind of safe. He really doesn't have a great switch into it. Um, this honestly isn't the worst either going into Finny. Um, could go into this, but not terribly worried. Hmm. Yeah, let's go into Latios. I don't think I want Darn taking chip damage like that. Yeah, you turn. That's a lot of damage. That's a crit. Okay. 178. So 92 damage. Yeah, that's unfortunate. Set did 92. Yeah, no attack. Um, my Magi's probably getting rocks up here. I'm gonna baton pass. If he's scarf, then that's good information to know. Okay. will remove the uh, the terrain or not remove the terrain but I'm gonna remove the t-spikes I'm probably taking a lot of damage here I do want to get a hit off on this Trinitar though but I definitely want to remove these toxic spikes and I don't think you'll be able to get them up later on in the game stealth rocks okay I'm gonna go to defog here probably should switch um, Geology could um, also come in and T-Spike, um, but I think I'm okay with that because I can taunt. So I will defog away. I will definitely get some chip damage in my, uh, okay, it is uh, Rocks Protect. I I've, I've saw this in Mox. Um, it would be great to da get damage on this T-Tar, but I want to make sure that uh, Toxic Spikes are out of this match. At least for the Darm, especially with Rocks up. Um, I can't re really let the rocks stay up this game. Um, he could easily rock protect here, um, but that's fine because I'll go for a taunt afterwards. Maybe even Moonblast, um, predicting the taunt, and then I don't have to reveal it, but that seems a little risky. If he goes for like Stone Edge, I probably die here. And then I can bring in the, uh, the uh, Darmanitan, and I should get a kill. Tyranitar. Bold. Chompleberry. Dies. Level 50. Yeah, it does 106% min. Um, top of Finny. to Trick Algae, level 50, I'm doing like 25%, so I think I'm fine going for a Moonblast here, because I could just uh, defog on the following turn, unless if Sand kills, alright Sand's not going to kill. If it's Protect or Galgen, then that's annoying. But I can remove these uh, Toxic Spikes, so it shouldn't be that bad. Barely lives, which is definitely better for me. Um, though I guess uh, that was a bad play, because they always just get up Toxic Spikes later on. Um, Let's bring out, hmm. Yeah, that was definitely a hindsight on my play. Yeah, that was a pretty bad play. Um, and Heat Wave. To Aegis Slash, Zapdos. Level 50, won't kill me. So I'm gonna make an aggressive play and go into this.
I might be able to uh, defog later on. Toxic spikes again, that's fine. Yeah, I probably should have taunted there. That was that was 100% a, a misplay on my part. Um, but I can defog later, so at least I have that going for me. And we'll see what the uh, the switch in is here. Vetragalgy is dead. Urshifu is coming out. Attack invested. It could be like bulk up. I'm doing like no damage to this. Um, surging strikes shouldn't kill me. Um, hmm. Do I go into Latios here? Surging Strikes doesn't kill me either, even with Sand. Um, is Sand up? No, I can't do that. I think I want to get a chip damage on this. See, so yeah, I'm going to go for close combat. I should live this. Ah, oh, crit. That's unfortunate. No. Nah. Fortune I got rid of Zen Headbutt on my uh my Dormanitan. Yes, that's like 30%. I figure that's a max physical defensive. Um yeah, like 33%. So a lot of a lot of uh a lot of defense Urshifu. I think I just bring this Latios in and go for Psychic. I could also just uh, uh, Baton Pass. Uh, there's no Misty Train up. I think he's gonna wanna save this. And so I will Baton Pass out into Sylveon. My what dead age slash is dead. You could also be protect on this, which would be annoying. I want to prevent as much damage onto my Darmanitan as possible. Sandstorm uh, subsides, which is a plus. So I'll get a default off. If he's protect, then I'll find that out. And if I I'll, might be able to find out if he's offensive too, if he had speed. Would be great to remove the toxic spikes for uh, for Sylveon. Okay, it's protect. That's fine. It's not the greatest, but Top of Finny is dead. Do I just bring in Darmanitan? I think I want a little bit more chip. Mm, but I also kind of need the, uh, the Bulu. Hmm, let me think. I could go for Stone Edge. Um, Predict the Zapdos to come out. 
I think that's fine. At least it's only at least it's double poison, so I'm not be I'm not taking as much damage. Yeah, go for Stone Edge here. Hopefully you don't stay in. You probably don't want to get this chipped for uh, Darmanitan. Darmanitan can also uh, just flinch the uh, Sylveon. Worst case, I don't kill if it's max defensive. It might only be EV to live like one um, hit after uh, rocks or something if it's scarfed. It might be that, so I might be able to kill anyway. He stays in. Okay. 30%. Okay. Hyper voice. A crit. 59. 118 damage. I think hyper voice wasn't working on the calc earlier. One eighteen, so he's modest. And maybe boosting item? No, he's leftovers. Woodhammer's going to kill, so I think you go into, uh... Now you may not go into Zapdos here. Um, I probably want a Horn Leech. Yeah, I think Horn Leech is fine. Um, Zapdos could definitely come out here. Okay. So I don't think I would have killed with uh, Woodhammer. But I'll recover enough HP to where I could, uh... Where I should be able to live. Okay, but time pass. So Sylveon is at 30%, definitely in range of uh, Darmanitan, um, is in range of Darmanitan. Uh. So he was like at 75%, so I did like 45%. It could be like, there's definitely special attack investment, so it's not max defensive. So Darm kills with superpower. All right, Darm kills with superpower. I definitely go into the uh, the Jolteon here. Could be U-turn. That'd be unfortunate. I mean, U-turn is probably to play. Heat waves. Knowing that this mon is faster. Let's go for a Thunderbolt. I want to get damage on this uh, Zapdos. Engage the damage. Like 33%. Okay. Zapdos, level 50. Like, max HP. I mean, that was pretty obvious. Dormanitan to max HP, Urshifu. Don't think I kill. Sand damage might do enough chip, though. I go into this Pokemon. I don't really have a choice. Um, if he attacks here, that would be problematic. I do need this healthy for uh, for the Escadrill, though. He's gonna get rocks up. Okay. I 
might sack off the Sylvie on here. But I don't think he's gonna sack off the uh, Tyranitar. That's too useful. And Zapdos is too risky. I also don't have terrain, which is unfortunate. But I want a Horn Leech and get a little bit more recovery back to maybe take an Iron Head. Okay, protect, whatever. I mean, that's gonna chip me down for sure. I do need to kill some Mons here. Yeah, I still want a Horn Leech. Stone Edge could be a play. It'd be really risky to go into Zapdos. So I feel like I'm a little bit behind. I feel like you just sack off the Sylveon. Okay, yeah. And I should kill, right? 35%. Okay, cool. Am I, uh, that might've been close, actually. So Sylveon is dead. I think the uh, Urshifu is just out of range of uh, Darman Darmanitan, unfortunately. It'll be close. I still feel like it's definitely winnable, though. Hmm. Let's see what he's gonna do. I feel like Zapdos is the play. Excadrill could come out. Urshifu, and just poison jabs. Yeah, he is just out of range. Um, I sack this. I can't go into a uh, Latios is too risky. If he U-turns, I just die. I might be able to live an Iron Head from the uh, Excadrill. Depends if it's boosted or not. Drain Punch would be pretty bad too. Poison Jab, okay. So he is at like 40-ish percent. And my Jolteon is dead. Okay. Um, what's gonna be the game plan? Darm could come out and maybe get a kill. Latios comes out. Kills with Psychic and then I lose to Escadrill. Yeah, I have to go into this and go for a... Uh, And go for Tailwind and hopefully everything works out. Oh, I could go for a, I could go for a kill here. Um, let's see, does Latios kill? I have to go for Psychic to kill. Okay, this isn't terrible. All right, I kill with Psychic. I'm pretty sure Sandstorm, uh, I should have checked if uh, the sand's gonna still activate or not. Okay. 42, okay, I'm in cut staff range. Great. So I will go for Tailwind. And I have three turned with the uh, Darmanitan. Let's see if he's life orb. All right, here we go. I mean, I kill with Ice Go Crash. And I have to go for high school crashes here. 
Um, super power doesn't make sense because he has his Aptos. Tyranitar might be able to live a hit. I could also flinch. Oh boy. It's gotta be a close one. But I might, I, if I land three ice gold crashes, yeah, I think Tyranitar's gonna live a hit. He's definitely got to figure out what to do here. I mean, it would be best case scenario if he goes into Tyranitar here. But I think he should sack this off. And then maybe if I don't kill the Tyranitar, I mean, I, if I got a flinch on it, I think I have a decent chance to win. What's he going to go into? Zapdos. Oh, oh, okay, Yachi. I'm pretty sure I still kill. Okay, cool. Ooh, sand is up. Okay. He's also protect. Um, yeah, I lose this. I have to go into. Okay, I have to go into Bulu. Um, hope he protects. It's gonna fail, but I go for Horn Leech. That's my only chance. Cause I'm not gonna kill with the. Uh, Ice Skull Crash on the T-Tar. He has to be bulky. Um, and if he reads this, that, that's fine. It's what it is. Let's see. Fingers crossed, finger crossed, he protects. Alright, he crunches. Nine. Alright, he wins us. Yeah, he wins us. Darn, that's unfortunate. Um, I was not a fan of this matchup, so he made the yeah, he made the right play. If he protected, then I had a pretty decent chance to win. Oh, I could also flinch. I mean, that is definitely a possibility. If I flinch here, I might have a chance. Um, nice cool crash. Maybe I even go for freeze. Maybe that was a better play. If I flinch this, I, I might have a shot. He's gonna live, and he, he hits, and probably kills. Okay, darn. So, yeah, I knew that was gonna be a tough matchup, but I brought it, I think, pretty close. Um, so yeah, good games to uh, Matt. Uh, congrats to the win, um, and hopefully he does well for the rest of the, uh, the playoff run. Um, definitely an interesting team I had here, um, and I thought I, I thought I put up a good fight. Definitely not a type of team I feel like I would draft in the future, but it was still a lot of fun. Uh, a decent amount of offense, so that was neat. Um, but yeah, uh, good games to Matt, and until next time, later guys. Hey, what's up guys, Shuckle King here. So a little bit of an analysis of my games. I do this after I uh, play every game and see what I did right and wrong. I don't, I mean, I don't post them after the video afterwards, but this game is definitely unfortunate. Um, definitely could have won this game if stuff didn't happen that wasn't necessarily in my control. Some of it was in my control, but there's definitely stuff that wasn't in my control that happened that was definitely unfortunate and gave Matt a really, really great chance to win. It made it pretty tough for me to win. Not impossible, but tough. So I'll explain all that later. Again, uh, 
good games to Matt. He definitely got a good win out of there and hopefully does well unless he plays Leo, then he can uh, lose to Leo. But yeah, I don't know if Matt in his video is going to make this play much of a difference or he's going to say how big of a difference this um, play made in his uh, like analysis of uh, the replay or whatever of his game, like maybe post-com, like apologize for it, all that. I don't know. But uh, there is a point in the game, which was here, it should be happening every time. I'm going to be a little choppy around this just to uh, get the, um, just to try to make this as quick as possible. So at this point, I had blue in on Sylveon. I went for Stonehenge predicting the Zapdos to come in. I would have done pretty decent damage and I would have put myself in a pretty nice position. Would have forced it to roost. Might have been able to make other plays like maybe going to Darm, maybe going to Jolteon, even go for like a uh, high horsepower potentially. Probably not, but I was predicting the Zapdos to come in. Um, it didn't come in, um, which is fine. I find out the Sylveon's pretty physically defensive based on that damage. Um, and then he goes for Hyper Voice and gets a crit. That's pretty unfortunate. So he did 100. Um, 18 damage i paused a little too early so you see right there he did 118 damage um, with a crit so you can assume he would have done about two-thirds of that damage without a crit so like 79 damage so it's about a 41 damage output so normally i would have had 41 more hp than higher this number actually makes a really big difference and i'm gonna also kind of lay out why None of the plays would have made a different whether he got this crit or not. So after he gets this crit, um, I feel like I know I need this Bulo. It's pretty important to uh, to take on the Excadrill because outside of Latios getting a uh, Tailwind and me killing um, Excadrill with Dorm, even with Sand is up, that's like the only way I'm going to be able to kill Excadrill. Excadrill uh, does pretty good to me otherwise. And that crit... Uh, basically forces me to go for a horn leech to try to get more recovery so I can stay out of range of um, extra drills killing me with iron head. I just have to assume that he's not poison jab. And we find out at the end that he uh, was not poison jab because we shared teams and such. So um, at this point, could Matt have gone into Zapdos predicting me to go for horn leech? Yes. Would Matt have predicted when I would have been at like 41 higher percent HP for me to go for stone edge on the following turn? Um, it's probably more likely that he would have made a switch into Zapdos predicting me to go for Stone Edge because I had a little bit more HP. I could have made a little bit of a riskier play. Um, so at this point, he uh, Matt stays in and lets me get a Horn Leech off, um, which is great. I'm at pretty decent HP. As you can see here, 116. Again, if I didn't get crit, I'd be at 41 more HP. Um, so that's definitely unfortunate, but I don't think Matt would have made a different play at that point, I don't think it really would have made sense to go in his Aptos um, if he didn't get the crit because there would have been a higher chance for me to go for a Stone Edge on the following play, predicting the, uh, the Zapdos to maybe come in on this. So I don't think he would have made a different play there. I would have been at 41% higher or 41 damage higher. So almost at full HP. Um, then there's these other plays that happen. The Zapdos make a different play here than go for Roost. Probably not. Um, you just make that same play. Um, next play to Jolteon comes out. Do you make a different play than letting your Zapdos get chipped? Um, probably not. I think the same plays would have happened. Jolteon goes for a Thunderbolt, then you get a uh, U-turn into a uh, Tyranitar. And he's able to get rocks up here. Um, I don't think it would have made a difference. Again, at this point, I feel like you go for rocks no matter how healthy my Bulu would have been. Rocks were just super nice to get Chip on the uh, Darmanitan, which he hasn't done any damage to yet. So um, I don't think he would have made a different play there and gone for like Stone Edge or such. Um, but I also maybe wouldn't have made this play into Bulu, um, predicting him to go for Rocks because I was at a little bit of a lower HP amount. If I was at full HP, honestly, really no reason for me to risk the Bulu at that point. I could have just gotten Chip damage off with the Jolteon um, and which actually might have put it in range of uh, Dorm killing later on. So that would have been interesting. But yeah, I don't think Titar would have made a different play other than going for rocks there. Um, the next turn, um, he goes for Protect. Um, as I go for Horn Leech, that's fine. The uh, damage there would have made a difference. It just did uh, more toxic damage, which is fine. Again, would have been at 41 HP higher. Um, next, I go for a Horn Leech and get a crit here. Now, the Sylveon was at um, 
like 35-ish, 36% HP. Um, Grassy Train was not up here, so there was a very, very low chance of me um, not killing with a Horn Leech even without the Grassy Train up. There was a chance. It probably would have been, honestly, a 1 HP extra recovery difference on my end, so I could assume I only would have been at 40 HP higher than 41 HP. So, again, all these stats should be the same, even with the, uh, the poison up and such. Um, and can I fast forward to a point? Okay, 75. So I would have been at, instead of like 116 HP, I would have been like at 115 HP or so. Um, again, I don't think Urshifu would have made a different play here than just going for a poison jab and killed my Jolteon. That's fine. Then my Latios comes out. Um... You could say maybe he makes a different play here, knowing that he kind of needs the Urshifu to uh, kill the Bulu with Poison Jab, if he thinks that I'm Babiri Berry. And I think he thought I was Babiri Berry this game anyway. Um, but the issue here was I don't think he would have gone into T-Tar because I could have gone for Aura Sphere here. If I was Life Orb, I have a decent chance to kill Urshifu with Aura Sphere anyway. And if he goes into T-Tar, on this play, predict me to go for Psychic. If he had to preserve his Urshifu to uh, get a Poison Jab off in my Bulu later, then I would have 2 KO'd his T-Tar spread with Aura Sphere um, if I was Life Orb, um, even E-Built. So that was would have been a risky play for him. So I don't think he would have gone into T-Tar in this play. Um, he could have, Excadrill would have gotten bopped. Um, Zapdos would have been tough um, because two Psychics would have killed it. So I don't think he really had much of a play at this point. Um, and I think he needed Zapdos to also take on the Bulu. So, yeah, I think at this point he would have done the same play, sacked off his Urshifu here. Then he brings in the Excadrill and Sand, which normally wouldn't make sense. This would just clean house, do a lot of damage right now, but he didn't know I'm cussed at Barry. Um, so I don't think he would have gone for a different play than just killing off my Latias, assuming that nothing else would have happened here. Um, yeah, so now I bring in the uh, Darm on the Excadrill. And, that, and he would be in a tough spot because I do have Tailwind up. Um, so if he knew that he really needed the Excadrill to kill the uh, the Bulo, he might sack off the T-Tar here. Let's see how many turns. Can I go back? Um, so let's see. He gets up Sand here. So he got five turns. Goes for uh, Protect. And I kill the Sylveon. Then... Um, I sack off my Jolteon here, then I kill the, uh, I kill the Urshifu there, that's four, um, turns of sand, and an extra drill comes out, I pop off the Tailwind, um, so he has two turns of sand left, so if he goes into, so okay, this would have been weird. So at this point, with the Darm out, he could go into T-Tar. If he goes into T-Tar though, I go for Ice Cold Crash, do like 75% to him. There's only one turn of sand left. So at that point, if I hit another Ice Cold Crash, the T-Tar just dies. He doesn't have sand and I win the game anyway. Um, Darm just cleans up. If he stays in with Excadrill, I kill it with Ice Cold Crash. Um, and then he loses to Darm. Um, uh, I'd have to figure out a way to get a hit on the T-Tar and then Darm wins. So that seems weird. So he would have to sack off the uh, the Zapdos here. Um, there's no reason why he wouldn't go into Zapdos. So yeah, Zapdos comes out and he dies. Oh no, Sam would have gone there. Yeah, it definitely would have made sense to go into a T-Tar on that last play because um, then he would bring out T-Tar be at 25% HP and Sand isn't up. So if he wanted Sand up, He'd have to sack the Zapdos or the Excadrill again and then just bring out the T-Tar. That wouldn't have made any sense. Or he just sacks a T-Tar and hope I miss. And then if I hit, I just win the game anyway between because I had to speed the Zapdos and the Excadrill. So I don't think he would have made a different play besides sacking off the Zapdos here, reactivating Sand, and then outspeeding my uh, my Darm because Tailwind is petered off. Um, but at this point, because, okay, so this is where where it all comes to make the difference. Um, so the T-Tar comes out here. I make a play into my Bulu. I make a play into Bulu because I predict the T-Tar is gonna go for a protect to uh, 
take away a turn of Tailwind. It necessarily didn't make a lot of sense for Matt to do that, but it was my only chance to win the game. Um, if he went to for protect there, because I needed to uh, get leech, uh, horn leech recovery on the Tyranitar, like the hundred percent Tyranitar, then he would have been in a a weird spot there. So um, at this point, again, I'm at seventy five HP or so. I would have been like at one hundred fifteen HP if the um, if I didn't get crit. Um, at this point in the game, though, there would have been no reason for me to not just stay in with my Darm. And then I would do about 75%, we'll call it, with uh, Icicle Crash, it did like 70 to 80%. So we'll call it the average like 75% HP um, to the T-Tar. Then he would have killed me with Stone Edge or Crunch. Um, I think he went for Crunch there, so Crunch would have killed me, even with uh, after Sand at least, if, uh, if it didn't kill me. Um, so he would have been at about 25% HP. Um, and then my Tapu Bulu comes out. It would have been at 56, 53 HP. Um, again, if I wasn't poisoned, I'd be at 73 HP, or not poison. If I didn't get the crit, I'd be at 73 HP. Um, 93 HP. Oh, gosh. Um, on the following turn, when I bring this in, so the T-Tar's going to be about 25% health versus my Bulu at about 93 HP. Next turn he would protect, and I would take 11 net points of damage because Sand and Grassy Train would cancel out. I would take 11, so I would be at 82 HP. Then he would be at around 30% HP. Um, so I'd be at like 83 HP. Then I go for Horn Leech. If he goes into um, Escadrill, as I horn leads there, then I'm at a range of Iron Head no matter what. If he stays in with the T-Tar, then I recover about 30 HP, so I'd be like at 110 HP, then would have lost 22 damage of poison. So I would have been at about high 80s per, uh, base HP. And at that point, let me pull up what the calc is. Excadrill does 63 to 75 damage with Iron Head on the following turn. Um, and I would have 100% killed um, with wood hammer. Um, so yeah, if I didn't, um, if I didn't get flinched or I'm not, not flinched, if I didn't get crit um, with that Sylveon, if I did get flinched by the Excadrill, I would have lost no matter what. But I basically came down to a 30% um, instance that would have been out of my control to lose a game that way. But I would have preferred 70% chance to win then really a 0% chance of win. I would have gone for the uh, the Iron Head flinch. He would have had to have gone for the Iron Head flinch. So just really unfortunate that it came down to that. And again, showed all the damage. I don't think he would have made any other different plays. It is a little frustrating. Now you get, I mean, we all get hacks and such. It's annoying. I mean, you guys saw the, uh, the APA, APA game that I had where I had quite unfortunate things happen there. It was a little bit more obvious that I got a little bit unlucky. Um, this game maybe is a little bit less direct that I got unlucky, but I definitely did get unlucky this game. And even the crit that I showed on the Sylveon wouldn't have made a difference um, because Sylveon would have died to sand. The HP, one, literally one HP extra recovery I would have had wouldn't have made a difference. So yeah, it's tough. Um, I guess the second question was, should I go on for a, uh, a defog on the Dragalge? If I did, I probably would have had enough health on my Bulu to live the um, Excadrill Iron Head as well. Again, even with the crit, again, wouldn't have made a, a difference um, if he got the crit. Um, but Poison definitely did help him in that regard because he got the crit. Um, but the Poison wouldn't have made a difference if he didn't get the crit. So definitely unfortunate, but it is what it is. Again, go check out Matt's side. Um, I just like to, again go over my plays, see how can I prove. And it was just tough. I feel like I wouldn't have made any other play outside of maybe going for a defog on the uh, Dragalge with my Finny, but it is what it is. Uh, just just annoying that both of these instances had to happen in playoffs. But anyway, until next time, later guys.